Hey, what's up guys? I'm here in El Paso, Texas at Desert Jiu-Jitsu Championship. I'm here with Chris Chavez. Chris, you put this event on. Can you just walk people through and let them know like what goes behind something like that? Uh, so it's a lot of hard work. Uh, luckily, we have a software now, but I remember back in the day, we used to do this with index cards. We've been running this tournament for about eight years now, and uh, it's grown so much. We're getting around 400 competitors now here in El Paso, and you know, being a city that's secluded from the rest of like the other cities, the closest other big cities are Albuquerque or Tucson and Phoenix, and it's like four or five hours away. It's, it's hard to bring competition or have competitions here often, and that's what definitely grows the community of jiu-jitsu, you know, and from the little kids looking forward to competing and also the adults being able to test themselves a lot. So that's why I decided this is something that we needed to be doing, and uh, it takes a lot of hard work. You know, we do have a lot of support by all the schools, and, uh, you know, they know that it, 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 it's something that we've been growing for a while now. We all got brand new mats now. We got TVs, we got laptops, we got... It's like as legit as possible now, so everyone's very, very happy. And as every school, we all look forward to this doing it, for this tournament to happen every single year. So it does take a lot of work. You know, I'm running on like two hours of sleep and putting together all the brackets till like four in the morning, but uh, definitely worth it. How, how long have you been putting this, uh, this on? So this is the eighth year here in El Paso that we've been doing it. And actually this year we did it for the first time in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So. It's, it's the, you know, we're follow, I'm following uh, what Eddie Bravo, you know, I'm a 10th planet black belt, first degree black belt, and I run 10th planet jiu-jitsu here in El Paso. Shout out Eddie Bravo. Shout out to Eddie Bravo. I'm running, you know, I'm following that whole submissions only movement because it's definitely the better and the cooler part of what jiu-jitsu really is instead of the points. You know, the points have a benefit and stuff like that, but what everyone really tries to do when we're doing jiu-jitsu and open basketball like that is submitting each other. So it's a, real, a lot more cooler of a... Uh, a rule set, a lot more relaxed and more, you know, going at the same time, more going for the kill a lot. So being able to move, uh, run with that, you know, live that type of rule set, I'm starting to grow it over here in the Southwest. There's no other tournaments here in the Southwest that do submissions only. So that's why I decided to move to Albuquerque and do it also. So now this time we had around 200 competitors in Albuquerque for the first year ever. And I think that was great. Next thing, next thing we're going to be doing is also in Arizona and hopefully, you know, further East Texas too, just growing the brand. And yeah, when I walked in and I seen the overtime going on, I was like, oh, a CBI rules, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, like, in my opinion, rules. yeah, they, for sure. They're the best rules, man. They are the best rules. So you're a 10th Planet guy, man. Who is you? Who are you a black belt under? I'm a black belt under Eddie Bravo. Oh, there you go. That's what's up, man. So I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of 10th Planet guys walking around with medals, man. So that's just a testament to your school, man. So definitely. what does that mean to you to see all your students out here dominating? It's great, man. I definitely put a lot of pressure on them on coming up to this tournament. Like, hey, this is, you know what I mean? Like, this is a community thing and it's for everybody. But we run this tournament and can't, can't have, these mats are ours, you know? We can't have people coming to our mats and also kick our butts on our own mats and stuff and so our rules say this is what 10th planet is all about and they're going to come and beat us here like i don't know so we're working the rules says working the strategies in ebi the ebi over time rounds has evolved so much also from the beginning to what it is now is like the strategy and tactics that go behind it are very well involved already now so it's a completely different game for those people that don't really go over that that much and nogi is where it's at also so we sweep it nogi i feel i believe i want to be a uh, modest and say that but uh we definitely do really good in no game we usually win the tournaments when, it, when we put together all the points and stuff like that even though we don't really have any key competitors we still end up uh doing really good showing up yeah so ebi is here in el paso for the for the weekend man so i guess what does that mean you having a big a big thing like that going on in your hometown el paso? i just think it's so awesome how much el paso has evolved and uh you know it's definitely a group effort and a community thing and you know the you know it just comes with a matter of time that you know just jiu-jitsu grows everywhere jiu-jitsu once I've never met anybody that tries jiu-jitsu is like eh, jiu-jitsu is not a cool thing everyone immediately falls in love with it and um it's really cool for it to be in el paso and el paso being you know starting to grow into you know a, a grappling or martial arts city as a whole we are already a martial arts city as like boxing because we got that mexican blood in us and fighting and you know boxing and stuff like that and i think that same bloodline is starting to fight grappling a lot more too and it's it, we got warriors out here that they're up and coming one of our one of my former students uh, that's now the instructor in 10 planet vegas he just competed at adcc andy varela he did really good he was out in the finals at the oh he was out at the adcc uh championship so yeah i was that there myself a lot. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. my student from white belt all the way to brown belt moved out to vegas and the rest is history he's one of, it's very very proud for us to as a school and me as an instructor to see that you know he's amongst the best in the world right now 
So, did you have a hand in bringing 10th Planet here, or how did they choose to pick El Paso? No, I was just a student here when it started. And, yeah. uh, you know, my old instructor had to move back to LA, so I, you know, I was in love with the whole 10th Planet system, and I couldn't see myself training under any other affiliation after that. So, I, you know, I sacrificed, dropped out of college, and, you know, made sure 10th Planet stayed alive in our city, and then now we have a school that's, you know, over 200 uh, members that are in our academy, so it's really good. That's what's up, man. So, um, Eddie Bravo brings EBI here. Did you have a hand in bringing EBI here, or how no, did they pick I, that? No, I didn't. I didn't. My old instructor was the one that works with uh, Eddie and does that. It's uh, Vic Davila, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So, I also seen that you had an MMA career, bro. Like, uh, I guess, how does that... How does the training as far as the sacrifice and the overall ethic differ MMA to jiu-jitsu? Well, it is, I mean, it is different because in MMA, it's, you know, you're really trying to kill, I, for me, it's like I'm trying to kill each other, you know, it's just a little bit more of a game and, you know, of an art and like a dance and a competition, but it definitely helps a lot, you know, when people try to turn it up in jiu-jitsu and they're grabbing and they start clubbing you or trying to be aggressive and stuff, it's just like, I think it's comical, you know, like for me personally, it just does not phase me at all. It's like, oh, we, you're going to play that game. We're, we're going to play that tactic. <laughs> you know, I could kill you right yeah, now, it's like, right? <laughs> well, that gives me in the back, you know, like, I have that in my pocket. Like, I feel like I'll, if anything, I could probably kill this guy anyways. But it just, it's like, oh, we're going to play this, like this, this, this war game. We're going to start playing, gr we're going to grind. Okay, let's grind. You know what I mean? I'm used to that in MMA. So when grapplers want to do that in jiu-jitsu, I don't know. I feel that the MMA in me still comes out. That's awesome. So you're going to be at EBI tonight? No, I won't be able to be there. I had a very long day. I'm running on two hours of sleep, so I'm going to take today off. Awesome, man. Hey, real quick, do you want to give anybody a shout-out, plug anything? Just everybody that came out to, uh, today uh, to the tournament. El Paso's growing so much. Such an amazing community. You know, I love seeing, you know, I feel like such an old guy now. I'm only 32, but I've been teaching, you know, kids since I was like 25 and having kids that I was teaching when they were like 10, 8 years old, and now they're like college wrestlers and stuff coming out and compete. It's, it's just amazing how how much people are evolving and, you know, staying in martial arts, because martial arts is definitely a, a lifestyle, and uh, it makes you better people, and they're becoming successful individuals, and I feel like it has a lot to do with martial arts. Hey, awesome, man. Hey, thank you very much for your time, brother. I appreciate you.